Any future that will not require a change from you will not be different from the past. You should be more aligned with Yes, indeed, if there's a man to pray, there's a God to answer. The answers come for you. In the name of Jesus. Build expertise and competence power. One of the problems of our current day Christianity is our embracing of mediocrity. An average Christian tries to be spiritual over everything and even wear his expertise or to unlock his inborn creativity from God is needed. He just tries to spiritualize it. And so it seems like mediocrity is more coined to the church and excellence is coined to the world. The Bible is speaking in Proverbs 22 from verse 28 to 29. He said in verse 28, Do not remove the ancient landmark the fathers have set for us. 29 tells us that ancient landmark. He said, Seest thou a man that is diligent and skillful in his business? It's an ancient landmark the father said. That such a man will stand before kings and not mere men. So as a man improves in competence, an expert is in his area of assignment who he stands before and where he stands changes graduating from mere men to kings the bible says that way man it has nothing to do with religion it has nothing to do with it is a cs thou a christian man cs thou a born again believer cs thou a man even if it's an hindu a shintoism it's a universal law of life that's is skillful and diligent in his business. Such a man will stand before kings and not mere men. Make up your mind to improve your competence. Be difficult to be replaced. Be too low dead to be ignored. If they must sack people from your workplace, you should not be the first. You came to a workplace, you have been there for 15 years, there is no form of improvement in your life. You didn't improve in your qualification, you didn't improve in your skill level, you didn't add up any value to your life. Definitely, if they want to sack, it has nothing to do with God. You will be the first to be, to, to, to be thought of. Harm yourself with so much of value. Build competence. This is the secret to influence in life. The comp- competence is, and what the favor of God gives men influence, not just the favor. Because even when the favor brings you before the great, it's your competence that keeps you before the great. Favor brings you before the great, but your competence keeps you be consistently in the presence of the great. Now listen, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 25, how that God had, a man had three servants, and he gave to them gift according to the several abilities. To one he gave five talents, to another he gave two talents, and to one he gave one talent. When the one uh, when he came back after a long while, he asked the one he gave five. So what have you done with it? He said, I gave five more. He said, Thou good and faithful servant. So the commendation of God, which embedded in it is the requirement for every believer in his area of assignment, is to be good and faithful. The word faithful there speaks of integrity, while the word good there speaks of what your expertise and competence. For instance, you can be a barber, but you are, you are faithful but not good. How do I know? When you tell someone I will open my shop by 7 a.m., they are sure to know that they will meet you there at 7 a.m. You are faithful. But when you bab them, their head will be like someone that, that is like a virtual head. You will creep off of it. You are bad in your assignment. And then you are babbing someone and you are saying, I babbing in the name of the Lord. That has nothing to do. Skill does not come by prayers. It is acquired. You have to learn them. Improve your competence. Become an expert in your field. Become a dominant force in the area of your assignment so that you are difficult to be ignored to you are difficult to be replaced. You should not be considered first when men are to be done away with. That's how you know you have improved your competence. When you are called upon to show up, you can defend yourself. You can come up with your expertise and men could bow for you and say, no, this one knows what he or she is doing. 
The Bible says in First Peter that we should make sure our calling that those who hear of us will not mock at us. They will not ask us to. Are you sure you were called? Even in the even to pastors, you don't run ministry and people are doubting whether God called you. Defend your calling. Make sure of your calling by building competence in that area of your assignment. And the Bible says when you do that, you will stand before kings and not mere men. Don't just get so entangled with that monthly salary, with that few business you have started, without taking the pain to constantly improve yourself. Now listen to this. No matter how current your gift or your skills are, they are becoming obsolete by the day. You have to improve yourself to stay current, to stay correct, to stay relevant, and to become what is soft after. I repeat, you must constantly improve yourself to stay correct, current, relevant, and is sought after. God bless you as you take these words to heart and put them to work in your life. And as I always say in this play, God's grace will continually shine on you. Till we meet again next time. God bless you.